Well, hey friends and neighbors, this is Chuck out at Sheraton Park Farms. Welcome back to the farm. So we done something today that got me to thinking might not be a bad idea to talk about that on a video. We went ahead and ordered some of our first broiler chickens or meat chickens for this season. And I want to talk today about if you want to start a broiler enterprise this year or anytime, the three things that you need to go ahead and do now. You need to go ahead and start doing them right now. If you're gonna do chickens this year, you wanna do chickens anytime in the near future, you need to do these three things immediately. Get started today. So we're gonna talk about that. But first, um, got a little hay we need to unload. So let's get some hay unloaded and then we'll, uh, we'll talk about what you need to do to get ready for your meat chickens this season. Okay, so got us a little bit of hay. Um, that should get us through the rest of the winter. The sheep aren't eating a whole lot of hay. A bale every other day, give or take a little bit. Um, so that should get us through to the beginning of March. So it should be in good shape on hay for the sheep for the rest of the year. Back to broiler chickens. If you're interested in doing broiler chickens this year, whether you're wanting to do it as a enterprise for your farm or whether you're wanting to do it um, just to put some meat in your own freezer and feed your own family, there are three things that you need to do especially if you're going to be selling. We'll get the third thing is particularly if you're going to sell this year. Item number one, you need to go ahead and order your broiler chickens now. Go ahead and find your hatchery now. Where do you want to get those birds from? Figure out where that is. Go ahead and reach out to that hatchery and place your order for this year. Um, depending on how many birds you're going to get, you may just be doing one batch of 30 at the beginning of the season. Go ahead and place that, place that order now. For longer term orders, if you're going to do 200 a month, 500 a month, whatever your number may be, go ahead and reach out to the hatchery now. Lots of hatcheries will let you go ahead and place your order now. Go ahead and put those birds on reserve and will then send you uh, an invoice whenever they ship those birds out. The reason you need to go ahead and be sourcing your birds now twofold. First, you want to go ahead and get your birds on order. Go ahead and make sure that you've got your birds lined up. You know how many you're going to get, you know when you're going to get them so that you can map out and plan out the different parts of the production, the brooding, the raising on pasture, and then also the processing. 
Number two, and I'm not a conspiracy theorist, I'm not a big prepper, but I do believe in being prepared. Um, you know, last year, uh, with the whole COVID-19 coronavirus thing, we saw a run on hatcheries during the months of March, April, and May, and birds became kind of tough to find. Um, lots of folks were looking for egg-laying chickens and meat chickens and turkeys, and were having trouble finding them because a lot of folks were buying those birds to raise for their own purposes. So, don't know what 2021 is going to hold, but if we didn't learn anything from 2020, we didn't learn anything else. We should have learned that we need to be prepared. So go ahead and order your birds now. So the second thing that you need to be thinking about um, in getting ready for broiler chicks for this season is you need to be thinking about your brooder space. Um, that's gonna be the first place that those baby chicks, those day old chicks are gonna go whenever you get them in the mail. And you don't need to wait until the post office is calling you at 6.30 on Tuesday morning to tell you, hey, your chicks are here. You need to come get them. So we run a couple of these. They're pretty large capacity brooders. They're about six feet by three feet. We'll typically start anywhere between 75 and 100 chicks in these. They don't last in here very long. Um, so we've got to be careful about how many we're putting in here when. But um, go ahead and get your brooders ready. Go ahead and do your research on your brooders. What do your temperatures need to be? Get your feeders, get your waters, and be ready for those day old chicks whenever they get here. You're also going to need some kind of heat source. We use just a heat lamp. I've got this on a screw um, on the back of this. That provides plenty of heat for these birds. We'll typically put two in here because they are kind of large capacity. Um, but go ahead and get your brooder space ready. These birds are going to need a warm, dry, safe place to stay until they feather out and you can get ready to move them out on pasture and put them out in whether they're in your tractor, whether it's the uh, Suscovich style tractor or the Joel Salton style uh, chicken pen. Go ahead and get your brooder stuff set up and ready to go. And finally, the third thing that you need to be doing right now, particularly if you're gonna be raising broilers this year for uh, a farm enterprise to generate some revenue, is start your marketing, start your advertising today. Before you ever even get your first bird, go ahead and start telling people, you know, hey, we're gonna be raising birds out on pasture this year. We're gonna have good quality, locally raised, clean meat. We're gonna be doing them out fresh air, gra green grass, lots of sunshine, bugs, worms, all the good stuff that comes along with raising chickens out on pasture. You don't want to show up at that farmer's market late April, early May, or whenever your birds are ready with a cooler full of chicken and nobody around to buy it. Go and get folks excited about your birds now. Get folks excited about what you're doing on your farm. Start your marketing now, whether it's a Facebook page, Instagram page, however you're going to do your marketing. It's never too early to get started. So go ahead and get that rolling now. I'm going to post a link to a video up here where we talked about how profitable uh, pasture poultry could potentially be um, it, using today's numbers compared to Joel Salton's numbers about gosh he wrote that book pastured poultry profits 25 years ago something like that numbers have changed a little bit but anyway um, check that video out if you've not subscribed hit that subscribe button follow along with us we appreciate y'all watching we'll see you on the next video thanks